because there is this uh, story today about, uh, well, we'll talk about Greg Wallace as well in a second, but there is this story today about Whitehall civil servants just not going back to the office, for far fewer of them actually, since Labour has come to power. Attendance at 13 government departments has fallen from the levels recorded in the days after Keir Starmer won the election. I, I, I don't know about you, Kevin, I have no problem with people working from home, but they've got to work efficiently, they've got to work well, and they've got to be available to their bosses, and indeed, if they're, you know, what they say, customer facing. If they're public facing, they have to be available for that, don't they? No, of course, absolutely. If it, if it works, then fine, but I think uh, in many, many cases, there's no doubt that the, the working experience and the working performance is improved by sharing office space with colleagues, yeah. bouncing ideas off. Well, I know as a young, I mean, it's different in journalism, of course, but I know as a young journalist, you know, I sat opposite um, the political editor in my first job and at uh, back in a TV station in, in Belfast, and I learned so much from him. I heard the calls he was making, the stuff he was doing, yeah. the people he was chatting to, he gave, told me stuff across the desk. Oh, you couldn't just give me a number for this person, da, da, da. What would you do? I'm going out to do a story in this part. Would you help me? Kind of thing. And yeah. they're just all those kind of conversations that really help you in an office. Absolutely. You can't, you can't get that. Even on Zoom calls, you yeah. can't get that type of stuff, yeah. that kind of spontaneous thing yeah. that you don't have to book a time to talk to one another about. So, so yeah, I mean, Labour, um, the, the, the target, the government's target is for civil servants to spend 60% so three days a week uh, in the office. Now, the Tories, you're right, I've got that those figures that they gave to the Telegraph on, um, it would appear a drop in occupancy levels. Now, the curious thing is, last night, uh, the Cabinet Office uh, put out uh, quite a strong rejection of that. Now, bear with me here, because I'll read out so what, what Just to say to people, the Cabinet Office is sort of central bit of government. It's a sort of the government of the government. It's a big, the, when they say about the centre, they mean Downing Street and the Cabinet Office. So this is about civil servants and how they how they interact. Exactly, so, yeah. exactly. So what, what they've said is that, um, uh, so between July and September last year, so when the Conservatives were still in, occupancy levels in Whitehall offices was at 57%. Mm -hmm. Between July and September this year, i.e. just after the election, it's gone up to 69%. Oh, okay. So they say, actually, mm -hmm. there's a good news story to tell as far as they're concerned that um, there are more civil servants coming, which does seem to fly in the face of what the Conservatives are saying. So, you know, you pay your money, you, you take your choice. <laughs> yes, we're getting contradictory information here. Um, yes, another place we're getting contradictory information is in regard to Greg Wallace, uh, because more and more fresh claims are flooding in about the MasterChef presenter and his uh, allegedly um, un un unkind and uh, ridiculous behaviour. Of course, he denies that he's done anything that involves sexual impropriety. Let's just remind ourselves of the last time we heard from him. This was on Monday. Day, and this was an apology video on his Instagram. I want to apologise for any offence that I caused with my post yesterday and any upset um, I may have caused to, to a lot of people. I wasn't in a good headspace when I posted it. I've been under a huge amount of stress, um, a lot of emotion. I felt very alone, under siege yesterday when I posted it. Uh, it's obvious to me I need to take some time out now while this investigation is underway. I hope you understand and I do hope that you will accept this apology. Where does this go from here, do you think, Kevin? Well, obviously there's this investigation going on um, at the BBC. Um, we don't know, obviously, if there will ever be an investigation of a criminal nature. We have no idea about that, but in the meantime, uh, the BBC investigation has to be allowed to run its course. Now, we know that Lisa Nande has been in touch with the, the head of the BBC, the Culture Secretary, just, just to, um, to touch on this, but also wider workplace practices in the BBC. Obviously, there have been allegations uh, against other um, BBC presenters in the past. So, um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think he's right in what he says there, that he needs to take some time out, mm -hmm. and we just need to let this investigation take its course, but it's obviously caused absolute chaos for the BBC's Christmas schedule. They've had mm -hmm. to cancel, mm -hmm. is it two MasterChef programmes, I think, that right. lined yeah, up yeah. For, for Christmas? You know, and these um, schedules... It's a very, very popular programme. Very popular programme, and these schedules are planned months yeah. and months and months in advance, and all of a sudden, three weeks before Christmas, they've got to rip it up and start all over again, and mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to fill... As long as Mrs Brown's boys are safe, <laughs> that's what I worry about. Well, they might actually end up having to show Mrs Brown. There's always a Mrs Brown's boys on somewhere, so you never there, know. There is, yes, no matter might, where you are in the world. <laughs> that, might, that might have to uh, take the place of MasterChef, but as far as I'm aware, they're still showing the current series of MasterChef The Professionals, and it was a bit bizarre, it was a couple of nights ago, I was flicking through the channels, and Greg Wallace was still on the TV on yeah. BBC One. Um, so obviously there's all sorts of, uh, I'm sure, high-level meetings going on inside the BBC to try and um, 
sort of um, navigate their way through yet another If only they'd had some of those meetings presenters. before when some of the allegations were made previously, they wouldn't, perhaps wouldn't be in this. Uh, situation, of course, um, Greg Wallace, as we know, um, through his lawyers, he has denied any uh, sexual impropriety or acting in a way that would uh, lead to people thinking that. Thank you very, very much indeed to Kevin Schofield. He's the political editor of HuffPost UK.